Hi, my name's Vin Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Sing to God, the 1996 album by Cardiacs. And I'd like to go through each track on this double album, exploring how they're put together. I do believe that having some understanding of structure in music can greatly aid our appreciation and enjoyment with it, particularly with an album as far-reaching and as wide-ranging as Sing to God. Now, Sing to God was recorded in 1995, released in June 1996. It's a special album for me because I was a student, a music student at Liverpool University in 1996 and a friend of mine introduced me to this band and I was just blown away by um, this CD called Sampler which had tracks from each of their previous albums. And then a, another friend of mine bought me Sing to God as a birthday present and it was just one of those um, albums which just changed my life. I've never heard pop music so interesting, humorous, complex, joyous, exuberant and beautiful. It really did bowl me over and I've been listening to the album continuously for almost 25 years. Now the album has long been regarded as the you know, pinnacle of their achievements. Of course, Tim Smith uh, sings and plays many of the instruments on the record in, and writes most of it as well. Um, John Paul, the lead guitarist, but he's had um, a hand in some songwriting credits as well. Jim Smith is on bass and Bob Leith on drums. Although this album was seriously neglected I think for many years. With YouTube in particular in recent years it seems to be gaining in popularity and I think that's a really wonderful thing, particularly amongst the kind of medi the mediocrity which pummels the airwaves these days. And of course Tim Smith sadly passed away this year so I'd like to dedicate this video to him who has had such an amazing impact on my life through the cardiacs. The first track, Eden on the Air, is a rather understated but very beautiful opening to the album. Um, the chord changes are really quite magical. Um, and essentially it's really in two sections this song, repeated. It's one of the simplest songs on the album. Um, we begin with what might be called a verse, um, and by the way I've put a description of each of the songs in terms of their form uh, below in a YouTube description. So we have this idea. repeated A, B, A um, structure. Um, and lyrically I guess it's about opposites, you know, um, we are on the, you're on the air, you're on the water. Also this sense of, I guess of not fitting in, uh, the sense that uh, what is bland, safe, even is what's uh, acceptable. Um, in life generally, not the more strange, the odd, the eccentric. That's what I read from the lyrics anyway. Eat It Up Worms Hero is Cardiacs at their most condensed, difficult, noisy and uh, exhilarating. Uh, within two minutes of a song 
there's five or six sections, some of them no less than a few seconds long. And uh, just to remind you, I've put down the form of each song below. But essentially this song is top and tailed by this idea based on the tritone, C and F sharp. And we begin with this rhythmic, aggressive figure which begins and ends this song. gives way eventually to something which could resemble some kind of verse, although we only hear it once. Eventually, that gives way to this repeated idea, which begins incredibly distorted and confused and garbled. Um, Tim Smith's vocals are uh, put right down in the mix and um, everything is out of tune. Um, deliberately out of tune, of course. Um, and then eventually this um, chord sequence comes uh, to prominence. So we go back to and the lyrics well like all cardiacs lyrics open for much interpretation but for me these lyrics talk a lot about male sexual desire and the uh, slightly comedic machismo involved with that although there's a slightly more serious turn near the end when uh, Tim Smith sings all, and all the beauty tells him he is a worm's hero, he is love and hatred. The third track of Sing to God I think is absolutely amazing, dog like Sparky. I think it's one of the best pop stroke rock songs ever made. I think it's so, it's that good. Um, it's Cardiacs at the catchiest their most melodic and um, their most quirky in terms of the chord progressions and some of the intervals in the melodies. Um, the song actually, you could argue, begins slightly before in the space between Eat It Up Worms Here and Dog Like Sparky because we hear this transition, um, this kind of interlude. <laughs> two-part counterpoint and um, that actually is a foretaste of the kind of third section in Dog Light Sparky and actually you find parts of Dog Light Sparky repeated as little interludes throughout the album gives a sense of unity in this uh, double album. Now um, Dog Light Sparky for those who criticise the cardiac, there's plenty of people who don't like cardiacs. They say it sounds a bit like scary clown music. Um, and you can see why at the beginning of the verse, uh, although I love it. You ever believed in big, strong daddy legs? And you believe in bad flying So on. Um, you know, this kind of off-kilter sense to this music. Um, Two chords, A and B, but um, Tim Smith varies the, um, the metre uh, between the first and the second line to give it that kind of uh, queasy feeling, uh, as if you're on a kind of a creaky ship almost. Um, and then we have the chorus. You know, 
so this is uh, what I love about the Cardiacs, those quirky chord progressions sliding in uh, to the next key, these kind of chromatic slides. We start with C, going up C sharp, then D by the end. Um, you know, really terrific stuff. Really, li really lifts the song as well. If the song just consisted of, you know, these first two sections, which I suppose you could call a verse and a chorus, it would be a fantastic, unforgettable song. But then this shows the genius of Tim Smith. We have this entirely new idea which lifts the song again to another level where the female vocals come in and we have uh, this bit. Such a beautiful chord progression. Of course that is what this is, which we heard before the song, remember? what that's based on um, and then we go into this uh, this new bit song is just so wonderful um, so we've got these four sections which kind of repeat uh, around and then we have an additional section which is like this um, sing along middle eight part where we have um, this <laughs> in the song uh, and then we have an instrumental uh, of that interlude part and the song eventually comes to an end what an amazing song um, absolutely brilliant uh, lyrically well it's so quirky isn't it about this dog dogs seem to be a feature in cardiacs uh, songs don't they in fact already in eat it up worms hero we hear the barking of a dog um, and dogs will continue to feature in this album quite heavily. Um, and of course we are reminded through these various interludes throughout the album of Dog Like Sparky. So this song is clearly central to Sing to God. And uh, it seems that um, the subject is this kind of dog-like deity who is um, somehow worshipped by perhaps other dogs. And... Um, you know, instead of uh, normal legs, he has these kind of shiny wheel-like um, <laughs> uh, dog legs. Uh, you know, it's pure fun, pure enjoyment. But it kind of links in with the uh, the title of the album. And indeed, my, many of the other songs, actually, they've got this kind of um, religious or quasi-religious uh, imagery, which we'll talk about in later songs. Fiery Gun Hand is a fan favourite and uh, a remarkable song. Um, essentially, it's built up of uh, two basic ideas, one based around um, an A7th chord. And we hear this right at the beginning of the song kind of pinged from, um, from hard left to hard right in the mix. Um, I think live, uh, John Paul played one part and Tim Smith the other part um, or Carver's Tarabi later um, so I think it's something like this and then it goes heavy like a verse if you like uh, an intro and a verse and then we have this 
bizarre bit, um, which I think is really great. Um, click, run, hello sir, I'm in a tango in a different timing. And we move to this uh, circular chord progression. And so on. And that, that bit's, uh, the, the vocals are kind of like in octaves. Click, run, hello sir, I'm in a tango, in a different and so on. Uh, really interesting, complete break uh, from the, the other section. Then we have this kind of circus um, fairground rides uh, section where we have again. So we have this alternation between that verse-like idea uh, and the click run hello so I'm in a tango which I guess is a bit like a chorus. Uh, interspersed between that we have these two remarkable guitar solos. Um, I remember seeing them live around about this time and John Paul kind of used to play this on the floor. You know really brilliant to see live. Um, and, you know really imaginative uh, guitar work, uh, absolutely brilliant. And uh, separating the two guitar solos, there's another uh, quirky section. So Fiery Gun Hand, you know, really rocks. It's a great cardiac song. Um, and lyrically, what it's about, well, we're kind of building on this religious imagery, which uh, we've kind of been hinted at already, uh, but of course stated in the title of the album. And um, something about, I guess, a modern day crucifixion uh, of Jesus. Instead of being killed by a cross, he's killed by a gun. Uh, there's a sense that um, the people are killing him, but he's somehow forced to kill himself. Um, and I think the hello, click run, hello, sir, I'm in a tango, speaks something perhaps of uh, judgment or... Um, you know, I'm cleaner than a filthy mess. Someone perhaps trying to uh, explain themselves on the day of judgment. That's how I see it anyway. Insect Hoofs on Lassie is a charming song um, and brings something slightly different musically. We have this kind of dum 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 um, rhythm, this 12-8 uh, time signature. So, um, a slightly different feel to this song compared to the other songs we've heard so far and essentially it uh, we have this intro And that's the song, you know, that's basically the song that's repeated round and round. One of the verses, we go up a semitone just to give, um, halfway through, just to give a bit of variety, I guess. And we also have this uh, refrain as the, the song progresses. And so what's it about lyrically? Well, it seems that it carries on this theme of worship and praise. Um, The narrator's uh, or the writer's dog seems to be worshipping 
and, and, and is infatuated with Lassie from, you know, the collie from the TV show. And, um, and not only that, but the narrator seems to customise Lassie and uh, make this um, hybrid with insects and um, completely balmy. But then the creator, a bit like Frankenstein's monster, he, the creator seems to want to have the adulation uh, <laughs> instead of Lassie. Uh, so an amusing song, but, you know, nevertheless carries on this idea of, um, of laudation and uh, adulation, worship and praise. Fairy Mary Mag, um, again, a different kind of song, um, more serious, uh, more restrained in nature, perhaps um, a little bit like Eden on the Air. Um, a chord progression in the intro is this. takes us to the verse. Don't do anything to stand there holding your light like man a boy shaking its hand If I were a bad dog you'd all be dead So note the end of that chord progression we have these chords G B minor and E that's a kind of signature throughout this album um, those three chords uh, we hear later um, in the song um, Odd even, it forms the uh, verse for that song on this too, Sing to God. Um, you also hear those chords at the end of Dirty Boy, the first um, song on the second disc. So it's another um, clever way Tim Smith gives this album unity, along with those interludes between tracks we sometimes hear. Um, also that, uh, that musical fingerprint, if you like, of those three chords. And then we have um, this contrasting section where we have this childlike female voice. I will tell the secret from your arms. There's this early music feel about this section as well, helped by the kind of modal tonalities but also the of course the instrumentation there's the harpsichord and this um, interesting brass ensemble and back to the intro so on and then back to the verse and back to the childlike section again and this song is more serious in tone, I think. It, the, it's very difficult to understand what it's about, but again, there's this religious imagery in there. Mary Magdalene is in the song, who, of course, was from uh, the New Testament, one of the followers of Christ. And the dogs uh, are back again. Um, it seems this dog-like deity has got power over the others. If I were a bad dog, you'd all be dead. There's a sense also of um, death and resurrection. Um, the last lines, she says, um, the, 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 the female voice says, crucified, I thought you were dead, um, which um, suggests something of uh, the resurrection as well. And then after this track, we have this interlude um, between here and Belly Eye, the next song. And... Um, this is one of those repeated motifs we hear in this album, a bit like that um, passage from Dog Like Sparky, which is repeated throughout the two discs. And this is this crazy, typically um, chromatic, weird um, Tim Smith composition, which I'm not going to attempt to play. Uh, it's often called the Sing to God motif I found on YouTube, and someone's transcribed it even, so check that out. But if you know, you know, you go. Da -da 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 
that kind of um, thing. Uh, really interesting uh, passage, which is repeated later. So Belly Eyes next. Uh, Belly Eyes one of my favourite tracks when I first started listening to this um, album. I just was completely addicted to that opening riff. I think the credits are to Tim Smith, but um, I don't know if John Paul plays the uh, the riff at the beginning. Just got kind of a Hendrixy feel to it. <laughs> is built on that chord progression in that riff and then we come into this next bit which is uh, this descending uh, set of chords which goes up and then back to the um, the opening um, there's this also this other section Um, kind of uh, sections are varied uh, we go back to the verse a key lower than before um, and incidentally the whole track I think is down half a, a step or a semitone and there's this great bit at the near the end of the song where uh, we go back to the verse but it's an instrumental led by the saxophones you played by Sarah Smith I think you know fantastic fantastic moment in in the song that's kind of these saxophones coming in um, lyrically, it's one of those kind of stream of consciousness, um, cardiacs lyrics. Um, there seems to be a lot of references to money and saving, um, childhood toys, um, something which often comes up, I think, in Tim Smith lyrics. The idea of um, a shadow. A horse's tail, the next track begins with uh, these E octaves. It's one of those quirky cardiac songs which keeps changing uh, many different um, sections. Then the next uh, bit is uh, like this. section which goes and with that last bit is uh, from the uh, second section we then have the psychedelic strings with this new uh, choppy section which eventually coalesces into this or the descending chord sequence. <laughs> And then eventually there's another short uh, crazy bit and uh, we go back to We finish the song how we began with This song is written by John Paul um, and the lyrics are kind of crazy all over the place 
Um, Jim is mentioned. I don't know if that's Jim, the bassist in the band. Possibly. Michael as well, whoever Michael is. Um, I love the line at the end. Perseverance, understanding, climb the stairs and across the landing. I love that. I love that at the end. Best to grin and reap. I think they opened with this song when I saw them live back in the late 90s. Man Who, along with Odd Even, is probably the most accessible song on Sing to God. Um, indeed, it was a single, and uh, although I don't think it made any dent in the charts as such, um, you can certainly hear the kind of a Britpop vibe about it. Uh, but it really is a great song. Um, and uh, we have a short intro, um, and then we go into the uh, the verse, which says it this. Um, at the end something of the Lydian mode about it that kind of raised fourth which um, is a feature of um, a lot of cardiac songs um, and then we have the the chorus <laughs> Hendrixy kind of look at the end there. Um, John Paul co-wrote this song with Tim Smith. Um, we also have this other section, uh, kind of a middle eight, I guess. Um, and then we have this kind of instrumental verse after this weird psychedelic um, trip up the keys with the um, those strings again. And I love the way like the vocals develop in here, the, the vocal line. Near the end we have... <laughs> kind of um, develops the vocal line and um, adding extra uh, notes in into the the bar which I think is really great um, it's such a brilliant catchy song this lyrically I think it's again back to this kind of theological um, aspect of the of, of this album in that I think man who refers to kind of the state of mankind this kind of uh, fallen state. We, I think there's even a reference to Adam from the Garden of Eden when he's kind of says he's a man vi viciously shaking the tree, um, which I think is an image of Adam. Which, of course, uh, from a theological perspective, which I think Tim Smith is getting from, uh, we're all kind of prone to lie. This kind of a state of original sin, and I think the song says much about um, how humanity isn't quite what it should be. Wireless is the last song on the first disc of Sing to God and um, it's kind of got a Stranglers kind of golden brown feel to it I always think. Um, it's um, in 5-4 um, with 5-4 and 7-4 roughly um, and we begin with this idea. So 
that um, that idea, those notes are repeated all the way through, and we hear it with these chords. <laughs> Contrasting section uh, with the, the lyrics black dog, white dress, hand holding with her wireless, uh, where we have this um, rather ancient sounding melody, almost like plain chant. Sung with female vocals, um, this song Wireless is uh, co written Tim Smith and Dawn Staple. So, presumably, Dawn Staple uh, is possibly the singer here. Um, so, that's that's wireless, really, an alternation between uh, kind of a verse and a chorus, if you like. And then um, the music kind of drops away, and we're left with just that kind of rhythm. Dum 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 and we hear um just very sparse percussion, I think even scissors are are clipped near the end, and then we go into um a poem. Now um I'm just gonna go back to some perhaps some of the 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 song um lyrics from earlier on in the in wireless. Um, Jenny's bed is nailed to the floor, black dog, tumbleweed, white dress, play, whistly, wireless, happy. Um, I think, well, the song seems to be about death. There's um, a young girl, Jenny, who appears to have died. And there's this vivid image of her. I always imagine her in the kind of, um, I think, the tumbleweed in the kind of this kind of deep South American Gothic um, scene. And... Um, her kind of wireless, her radio is playing while she lies dead. It's quite um, a powerful image. Um, the dog is there again, black dog, um, which of course has been a, a you know a big image throughout this um, this uh, album so far. And just you know that uh, fireworks under a pillow, cold girl and deadness. Can you cross your heart? Jenny played wireless, black dog, white dress, hand holding with a wireless. Kind whistling on when she passed from this world off into the next. So there's a sense that perhaps death isn't the end. Again, perhaps um, something of the kind of uh, theological, spiritual overtones in this album. And then at the end of the uh, the track, the closing of this um, this disc, uh, after those scissor rhythms, Tim Smith recites a poem. Um, which I think he calls Peril at Sea, which is about being on a boat and then um, there's a hole in the boat and the whole ocean comes into the boat. And, you know, typical Tim Smith fashion, the lyrics have a very kind of childlike charm to them. Um, there's this innocence, naivete about them. And then um, who comes to the rescue but it's action fish with red, red fire coming from his gills. And um, action fish with red fire coming from his gills, of course, is uh, forms a basis for a song in disc two of Sing to God. Thanks for watching. <laughs>